1998, five women disappeared from Los Angeles. They all had one thing in common. They had been friends and associates of Carlos Castaneda. Hello, people, and welcome to a new episode of Desert Trippin'. Today, we are in Panamint Springs, which is near the western edge of Death Valley. And we came out to an area called Panamint Dunes, and we took a about a five or six mile dirt road that was a little chopped up in some places. Um, and we headed up this direction in search of Patricia Partan. Patricia Partan was one of Carlos Castaneda's devotee, uh, followers, if you will. They called themselves witches. And when he died in 1998, they made good on a promise to disappear. This is the last spot where Patricia Parten's car was found. But before we get into any of that, let's try to find a little bit more about who these witches were and what they were doing out there in the desert. Uh, and to make some sense of it all, we've invited uh, Dr. Sean Munger, a historian, an author, uh, a teacher who has a very interesting podcast on the disappearance of the Tensegrity women. Dr. Munger has been really gracious to join us here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, Sean, um, can you sort of make a little sense of, of who these five women were and what you think they might have been doing out there in the desert? Sure. Well, there's obviously a lot we don't know. Um, really, the story begins with uh, Carlos Castaneda, and he was a, a, a very popular author, very popular in New Age circles in the late 1960s and early 70s. There was a lot of drug experimentation. So he wrote a book, eventually several books about this process. It be they became super popular in especially the New Age underground at this time. So there was this controversy in the early 70s about the veracity of what he was doing. And so he kind of retreated from public, the public eye at that point. Uh, and that's his, when his he purchased that compound on Pandora Avenue? Yes, yes. At some point after that, yeah, he, he bought the compound. And there were a number of uh, disciples, you could call them, people who followed him, who were interested in his philosophy, and he maintained a very close circle. Once he was out of the public eye, a very close circle of devotees, basically. Many of them were women, and he also had sexual relationships with a number of those women. Uh, we don't know how many. We don't know a lot about what went on because he was notoriously reclusive Eventually, the philosophy was rebooted in a commercial sense as Tensegrity, which is this kind of self-help, kind of spiritualism type of program. Um, but eventually, there was kind of a core group of about five or six uh, women who were very closely devoted to him, very heavily involved in this Tensegrity process. Carlos Castaneda then was diagnosed with cancer which was not supposed to happen given his right. teachings, which were about the transcending of physical, you know, the physical world or whatever. So this was kind of an inconvenient fact in, in this group. Uh, so he died of, uh, I believe it was liver cancer. Liver, no, yeah. Yeah. I think it was liver cancer, uh, but he died in the spring of 1998. And there was a, a crisis among his followers, his close his close followers, as to, you know, what are we going to do? He had, uh, and Patricia Parton was one of these people who had severed contact with their families to go live with him and to basically spend their full lives kind of devoted to him. So on the same day uh, in the spring of 1998, uh, five, possibly six, but certainly a core group of women sort of disconnected from everything, dropped off the grid and vanished at all the same time. Their phones were cut off on the same day. They were last seen at roughly the same place around Los Angeles, the same time. And no one is really sure what happened to them. 
So that was kind of what, what I, in my video, call the witches, and they called themselves that. This is not right. just... And as you pointed out, Joe, the uh, only clue that really we know is that the body of uh, Patricia Parton was found in 2003, uh, skeletal remains, some clothing, and it was, I think, at the same, I don't, I think the car had been found years earlier. Yeah, five years right. earlier. Yeah. Right. right. And she, so far as I know, is the only person who, among right. this group who was found. I think you've answered all my questions, but my last question for you was any more um, insight into who she was as a person? Well, I think the best insights come from the, the Amy Wallace book, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, there were not many people who knew her well. And I think, as you point out, like her entire adult life was was in this group and kind of derived from Castaneda's aura, so to speak. So I, I you know, when I think of Patricia Parton and, and what happened to her, really the thing I think about is just how terrified she must have been when this happened. And like, you know, what am I going to do for my life now? You know, where do we go from here? If he's gone and your whole life is wrapped up in that, where do you go from there? I think it was obviously a very profound thing that, that must have happened. Uh, you know, and I mean, you've been there, I haven't, but my guess is that it's a pretty, that's a pretty raw place out there in the desert. I'm looking for the little parking lot. There was like a little marked area. Here it is. Hello, people, and welcome to a new episode of Desert Trippin'. Today we're here in Panamint Springs, California, on the western edge of Death Valley because it's right here in this spot where in 1998 four actually five people disappeared five women only one person was ever found her name was Patricia Partan and she was found right here at the base of those sand dunes and she must have walked in this direction for a while was she tired was she hungry? Was she thirsty? Was she scared? We don't know. We're just out here trying to channel some of her energy. I've got a couple hours of daylight. It's always good when you're walking to stop and turn around and get your bearings because when you're coming back, sometimes it looks real different. Okay, so I just ran into uh, two fellow travelers uh, who were hiking out here. I thought I was halfway there and he said it's more like I'm 25% of the way there because it is misleading. You know, there's no markers, there's no shade, there's no, it's just deserts. So now that I know I have another almost three miles to get there, I'm going to turn the camera off. Well, as you can see, we're getting close to the dunes and we walked about an hour and a half. <sighs> and like they said, there is zero shade out here. So bring water, which I did. Whew. We've got about that much daylight left maybe an hour or two, and then another hour of half light, and that should get me back to the car pretty easily. I got my hat turned this way to cut down on the sun on my ear. I know I look like uh, Hip Hop Eddie, but that's not the purpose. Okay, fading out, three, two, one. Oh my God. Oh, it's been a gradual slope up. And now we have to climb this little hill here. Woo! I found some shade here. A little 
molehill with a thicket. And, uh, nice and quiet, although I just heard something. I don't know if it was a dog or what. Okay, I think I've caught my breath now and uh, time to walk a little further towards the dunes, maybe even get on the dune. Ah, man. As you can see, we made it to the sand dunes. And these are pretty fucking awesome. It's, uh, it's quite lovely here. Definitely worth the walk. We're gonna go up here and check out the view. Okay, people, as luck would have it, we hung out here a little later than we had planned, and the sun's going down, and uh, we only have so much sunlight left, so we're gonna start heading back. Look at this beautiful light and shadow. Now that is unexpected beauty right there, baby. And then it just falls off. And out in front of us, it's just pristine sand. And then about four or five miles of desert to our car. And in our car, we got a lot of water, ice. Got some iced tea, beef jerky, chips, a virtual feast. And uh, we'll be there in no time. Just telling myself that, but between here and there, it's a lot of steps. But we made it. So, Patricia Partan, if you can hear me, I hope your soul is at rest. I heard your body was discovered somewhere around here on the edge of the sand dunes, partially uh, mauled by wolves or something. And uh, I'm sure you did not feel any pain because it, by that time you were probably long dead. But I hope your soul is at peace. I guess I got a sense of what your last moments on this earth were like. The light is very beautiful right now. I haven't seen any wolves or coyotes or rattlesnakes or tarantulas or scorpions. So I feel pretty safe. And our car is still too far away to be seen. And that's how much light we have left. Glad I didn't die out here. It would have been horrible. And uh, pretty sure you can see the car now. Oh, God. Elementi, yeah! Okay, people. Well, hope you enjoyed this adventure coming out to Panamint Springs, um, the dry lake bed, you know, the sand dunes, uh, the dirt road, and really learning about the last days and hours of Patricia Partan and her four associates. We're gonna sign off now. If you're new here, please subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, thank you. 
and um, we'll see you on the next adventure. This is Joe Bowie, desert tripping over and out in three, two, one. <laughs>